is an honest game. It's true to life. It's a game about sharing. Football is a team game. So is life. The words of Joe Nima. Everton Fitzgerald Bato Gonzalez, a lawyer by profession, was born on 14th May 1962 on Athel Street, Villa area. I went to a school in Villa by the name of Miss Edwards Baby School, then on to the Antigua Pilgrim High School, located on Bishopgate Street, then on to Bartlesville Wesleyan College in Oklahoma, now Oklahoma Wesleyan University, then to Cape Hill in Barbados, and then to the Norman Manley Law School in Jamaica. After returning to Antigua, he worked at the Inland Revenue as a tax professional and now a special advisor to the Minister of Finance in the Ministry of Finance. Bato describes himself as a passionate, loving, giving, and romantic person with a great passion for football, and he is dedicated and committed to the world's number one sport. Here, he makes mention of his favorite sports persons. Well, my favorite persons in football, I would have to say, uh, Internationally, uh, I, I love Pele um, from what I've seen over the years. I, I, I am a big supporter of Diego Maradona. Um, I love basketball also, so my favorite player there would have been Michael Jordan. And uh, in cricket, uh, Sir Vivian Alexander Richards. The Tan Gonzales is happily married with five children. As a player, he was first encouraged into the sport of football by the likes of Alistair Thomas, Goff Gons, Norman Sacco Shovington, Everton Richardson, who he went to school with, Wallace Williams, and Luther Lee of the Villa Lions Football Club. Ivor Ice Charles, an associate of the Villa Lions Football Club and a family friend, gives an exemplary account of Battle's passion for football. Well, Everton Battle Gonzales, I've known him from since. He was a small boy. I've been a friend of the family all his life. Even when his parents were alive, you know, I knew him as a little boy going to Pilgrim High School, you know, growing up and around the area. We used to play our cricket and football in Gainesville. That is where the um, Wesleyan Junior Academy is now. And for ever since he was that little, both in cricket and football, he was very competitive. His only goal was to win. Not win at all costs, win while enjoying the game, but he always loved to win. He never enjoyed coming out to lose. He'd do anything within the rules to win. And um, I must say, he took that attitude from since he was a child up to now he's a grown man in every aspect of his life. He has taken it on the football field where he has achieved so much, both with Villa, winning two titles back in the 80s, and up to now he's still very much involved with the Villa Lions team because he helps coach, he helps run the team, and he's there at all the practices just showing the level of interest that you very seldom find from people at his age involved in the, in the, in the team that they have brought along all the way. Tori is a guy that he has the ability to lead. I watch him in practice when he's 
he's, he's training the team and the things he just come up with and the respect that he, he has earned from the players that come in contact with him. It's just so nice because he, he leads from the front. He's not leaving it to anybody else. He's taking it, taking it on him and carry the load. And when you're in the club and see him doing that, you have no other choice but to join. So as an administrator, I know he is one of the best, if not the best out there. And I know you have great ideas as a man that's full of ideas. Panzal's achievements rapidly increased. In my days at Oklahoma, well, now Oklahoma Western University, I, I was there 30 years ago, and my goal scoring record there still remain, uh, 112 goals in four seasons. I still hold the record for the most goals scored in the last 20 years at the ARG, which was four goals in a single match against Guyana. I am still the Leeward Islands all-time goal-scoring champion in terms of Leeward Islands tournament. I am the, I think myself and both White from Empire are the only two players with four goal-scoring titles in the Premier Division and I could go on and on. Count White, former director of sports and national football youth team manager, also makes note of Battle's first international encounters in football. I have known Battle since the early 1980s. My first um, contact with him was as an under-19 player. We went on a tour of the U.S. And even though we didn't do too well in that tournament, um, I know that he showed signs that he was quite an accomplished player. And I knew the coaches then, Pin Hewlett and Danny Livingston, had you know a lot of confidence in him and his abilities. Um, he stood out in local football as well and he eventually won a scholarship to um, Oklahoma um, Wesleyan College right and we had lost touch with each other for a couple of years but I know there are two occasions that stood out in those senior years you know when he was um, when he graduated the national senior team. Um, we had to play Haiti in Haiti in two World Cup qualifying matches. We lost the first 3-0 and we won the second 2-1. But they had beaten us because they had scored um, these four goals and we had only scored two. Batao had a problem on the field and I think it's a bit humorous but serious in that whatever they used to mark the field um, I think we call it white lime and some of it got into his shorts and he had some severe burning and scalding as it were and his inner thighs were sore, he couldn't keep his legs together, he couldn't wear his shorts, he couldn't wear pants and little did the airport authorities know that we ushered him through the three airports with the big towel wrapped around him and we had to explain it you know but um, still it was fun serious but fun and um, he took it in good stride. I can't recall if he actually scored a goal but I know the two persons who were most um, responsible for our winning the second game was himself and Evie Richardson. I do know that later in the year he scored four goals against Guyana. We had to win the match against Guyana here to qualify for the CFU finals and we drew nil-nil in Guyana at border and when we came home here he scored four goals and that is no easy a task that is quite some achievement especially in those days um, others might come and score four goals in a match the circumstances might be different but it's not going to be easy it's not something that you know anyone can overcome easily um, he always showed a passion for developing football. He is always serious, you know, talking about wanting to do this and wanting to do that. And when I heard he went into administration, when he said he was going to run for the presidency of the Football Association, I was not surprised. I thought it was quite ambitious because football at the time was taking a beating. And um, for such a young man to want to undertake you know, something as big as that shows, you know, that he has a lot of confidence in himself and his abilities. And um, he made the effort 
um, he beat a very good friend of his, Mervyn Richards, to take the presidency. Gonzalo sees himself as a positive leader of the population that is involved in football, which need guidance. The youth need positive leaders to be an example for them. As we speak, I sit personally on the FIFA's on 20 World Cup Committee and I look to travel uh, next year to organize that. In addition to that, um, I was a part of the Normalization Committee which paved the way for the uh, 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 revitalization of the Caribbean Football Union where uh, my colleague and good friend Gordon Derrick sits as president. And I have been instrumental in a number of ways in terms of club development locally, uh, club development regionally, and uh, uh, I am uh, constantly called, called by the president of CONCACAF, Mr. Jeff Webb, to lend any assistance that I can in terms of furthering football, not only locally, but regionally and internationally. Of the lights, um, I must refer again biblically to the biblical saying that uh, the fans and the clubs in Antigua and Barbados requested lights for a number of years. Uh, government was unable to do it. Uh, both uh, governments, uh, both the ALP and the UPP, the Cricket Association and Carnival were unable to do it. And here came the Antigua and Barbados Football Association. And we prayed about it. And God answered and said, Let there be lights. And there is lights at the Antigua Recreation Grounds now for all to see. Uh, the Antigua and Barbados Football Association has lightened the darkness uh, from whence we came uh, on different uh, leaders of the Antigua and Barbuda Football Association. So we're very, very proud of that and you would have seen the lights in all its wonderful um, brightness uh, during the CFU tournament. My intention to help the, the sport grow in Antigua is part of the ABFS mandate. I think you can see it in the primary objective of the Antigua and Barbuda Football Association which is to constantly improve the game of football in Antigua and Barbuda. And uh, we would have been bold and ambitious to do all that we did in four years. But I can tell you, if you want to uh, continue the growth of football, four years is not enough. And so one would require another four year term to continue. Uh, what we want to do in the uh, next four years is to look at the infrastructural development, which is uh, not only the, the ARG and the Painters um, New Development Center, but a number of club teams, and I can call some of them like uh, Pickets, like Villa, like uh, Golden Grove, like Fort Road, uh, like uh, Garden Stars, like Liberta, like Old Road, and a number of other areas that we want to assist our clubs with developing their infrastructure that even if they're not in the Premier Division, that they will be able to access or to raise revenue by gating and fencing their fields so when the matches are played on a home and away basis that they could generate some revenue and then the ABFA could just probably uh, exact a 5% or less administration fee thereby helping the club with them to take care of themselves. Uh, there are significant um, negatives being hurled at you but being the ultimate optimist I see those as uh, 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 as gentlemen and ladies trying to bring out the best in the person that they have elected Everton Battle Gonzalez. And so I listen, I dialogue, I discuss, uh, I find time to go to all the games, uh, not all the games, but most of the games in, in, in the various divisions, like the second division, the first division, certainly at the field division. And I listen to the, uh, the, the complaints and I listen to the proposals of club members and I try to incorporate them as best as I can. Some can't be done overnight, some have to take a long-term um, way of doing things but at the end of the day I am accountable to uh, the membership and as such I, uh, I, I, I will make it my business to always remedy a, a situation, find a solution to make the football better in Antigua and Barbuda. There was never a moment where I felt this illusion because I, as I say, I have to go back to biblical saying, love conquers all. And since my love for football is never ending, and uh, I, I wanted to, 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 to mention one of my other um, popular athletes was Muhammad Ali. Um, you know, uh, he never thought that he could lose. Uh, he, he was the greatest, he was the best. I, don't, I, 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 I won't advocate this, these, these sentiments because he that comment after um, uh, has an opportunity to see where we have led. Uh, but uh, in terms of the responsibilities of the presidency. I, I, I do it with great pride. I know the importance of it because the population that is involved in football needs guidance. As you know, 
uh, youth need positive leaders to be examples um, for them. Uh, I need to be a role model. I need to extol the virtues of education to keep away from crime, to have respect for the game, for yourself, uh, to, to, to seek and find uh, opportunities for higher education, uh, to, to, to ensure that opportunities, what we call, um, what we call uh, building capacity, and providing opportunities for not only young persons, but persons who would have given to the sport recognition, uh, promotion. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I've been castigated on numerous occasions for delving into jingles, but uh, I think jingles is a very interesting way of, of sending out the message of making sure that you extol the virtues of good behavior, of integrity, of accountability, of respecting laws, rules, and regulations. And uh, the president of today is unlike any other presidency before. And as such, and, and as such I know there are some uh, visionless persons and some naysayers who uh, feel threatened by the level of the presidency um, at this point in time. But I will continue working hard so that I continue to be an example for young people to follow and someone who they can prove, be proud of to emulate. In terms of the Premier League, the Premier League is our flagship competition. Players worldwide have sought to play in the Antigua and Barbuda Football Association Premier League. You know of the journeys, the migration of our good colleagues from Jamaica. We have no players from Suriname. We have always had players from St. Kitts, Trinidad and Tobago. Remember the Trini days. Uh, in fact, throughout the region, uh, players have always wanted to come to Antigua and Barbuda. Officials here visiting have indicated to us that nowhere in the CARICOM area have they seen the pomp and circumstance that is visited on the start of Premier League, Premier League matches in Antigua and Barbuda. The playing of the FIFA anthem, the national anthem, the, 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 the pageantry, the colour, the entertainment, um, recently hyped up, uh, hyped up by um, Stonewall International of course. And uh, we are looking to improve those areas because sport and entertainment go hand in hand. So from a Premier Division point of view, uh, we are very pleased with that. Um, uh, the, there, there have been some on occasion where uh, uh, the fans have dropped off for a number of reasons. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, things are not as bright as they once were in terms of the economic situation and so you find time in the first half of the competition where patrons are choosing the matches they go to. But when I'm looking at the uh, bringing out of the second uh, the second round schedule and I'm looking at to see the lineup uh, where at least five teams are in contention to win, uh, another three teams are about mid-table and then you will have a relegation battle. It augurs well for the resumption of the Premier Division and uh, it's, it's, just, it's just going to be real fantastic going on to uh, the end. Well, they, uh, to be re-elected for the Antigua and Barbuda Football Association, I would have to remind the members of the Football Association of what was accomplished in the past four years. And comparatively speaking, there has been no administration in the past that has accomplished more than this administration. Not by ourselves, but with the way how our member clubs have kept us on our toes. And I want to say special thanks to the clubs for that. They have been at us. In fact, I sometimes I think that they wanted us to be perfect. But we haven't achieved perfection, but we are still striving to be the perfect and the model administration in the, uh, certainly in, 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 in the nation and by extension the Caribbean and internationally. So uh, we would have demonstrated that we have taken the football to its highest height so far, both at the senior level and at the junior level. Uh, in, in terms of our administration, uh, we are well recognized across the landscape, both uh, locally, in, uh, regionally and internationally. Our, our, our female programs are doing well, our grassroots programs, our, uh, our coaches and club education and, and development are doing well. So from every angle, in terms of what we were elected to do, we have satisfied our club members as to that. I know there's one little ticklish area in terms of uh, uh, providing funds to clubs. And what we are seeking to do as we speak is for those clubs who require uh, equipment uh, uh, like footballs and cones and equipment, we have 
uh, uh, gone out uh, into the community and we for the first time in the history of Antigua and Barbuda is looking to roll out sponsorship for the first and second division which will take care of those needs. We have a, a very wonderful local sponsor for the female division and we are just looking at the, at the whole contract now to provide the various requirements for the female division. We have also embarked upon a very interesting program where we have set up a finance committee to look at financing the clubs in them and we have come up with a wonderful idea which is, it involves a grant system and we are looking to uh, have all clubs agree on that because that is a matter that has to be agreed to by council and so council having been briefed of its contents uh, will decide shortly so that all clubs will be involved in this revenue sharing measure. Uh, not one club will be left out. We don't uh, intend to leave any club out, be they second division or first division. We know that the premier division is uh, the high mark, uh, the, 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 the top dog, so to speak, in terms of our various divisions. But we want all inclusiveness and our mandate and mantra is fair play. And so uh, we want to ensure that all clubs benefit from this revenue sharing machinery. If it has to be tweaked, we'll ensure that we roll out a very satisfying program to all clubs because at the end of the day one of uh, my very serious mandate is the unification of the Antiguan Baptist Football Association.